friends, I've got some big news. I am moving. Yep, within the next week, I will be out of my current house slash dye studio. And I thought it would be a perfect time for us to look at all of those dyes that I have been saving and storing for the last year and a half, many of which are still viable. So today on Color Quest, as I pack things up, I'm going to be talking about exhaust baths and storing dyes. So let's take a peek at all of those hidden gems in the various places around my current home. I'll be getting rid of everything, but not down the drain. We'll be doing some exhaust dye baths and let's see what we get with all of those amazing natural colors that I've had sitting around for so long. Okay, first things first, gotta empty out some fridges and empty out my back table. So join me today on Color Quest as I run around getting ready to use what I've been saving up for so long and start fresh. And I know nature's gonna provide some beautiful color as I say goodbye to my current studio and hello to my new one. Let's go. First, I'm gonna take you outside. You know this back porch pretty well. I actually, I'm gonna to have to take down my hanging line. This actually is sort of a signature color quest line. I have found a new space in my new home for one. It won't be this pretty blue background, but it'll suffice to be able to hang some things outside of my kitchen studio. But this table out here has been a source or a place where I've been able to store things because of where I live and it's relatively cool. It's a great place for me to put both used dye matter, like pine cones and nuts and things like that, because although I've used them once, I can potentially use them a second, third, and fourth time to make exhaust baths. So I have some of those things out here, but then I also just have some dyes. And these were dyes that I thought might not be as sensitive to heat. And also if I lost them to heat, that's okay too. So let's take a peek and see what I've got out here. So as I mentioned, I have things like the acorns I foraged for and used. These actually I didn't use for dye yet. So I have some left over. I also have some over here as well. This is enough that I can make another batch of acorn dye and I made some really pretty color from that. I also have many different kinds of pine cones that I have collected over time. This big giant one that I got down in California. I think this was a Monterey pine. And then I have some cypress cones. I don't know that I did anything with those. Maybe. So you start to do so much you forget. Then this was really, really awesome. I didn't focus terribly much on this. I think I just made some color and didn't do a video on it, but this was white coconut and it made the most beautiful color. I also have the remnants of bark that I've used. This is birch bark as well as the remnants of pine branches, all of which make different colors. What else I got here? I did some foraging and I never did anything with this. So these are horsetails and horsetails also make a color. I'll probably do a video on those eventually one day here. I always have a random stick. I always test out the different things, the branches, the cones or seeds. Obviously all of these things are like tannin rich items and felt pretty okay to have them sitting out here. I also have the leftover Hopi sunflower seeds. I don't know that they'll produce color again. I've already used them once, but 
I figured they might be worth an exhaust bath. And then I also have the Hopi dye itself. So this is the dye that I used in the video here that I did a year ago. And this one's like a pretty pink now. It did make a sort of lovely, very light lavender and grayish colors. Then you know what? I've got a whole bunch of things I'm not sure of. This one's actually pretty new. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is what happens. This is why you have to label. And I didn't label. Here's some hibiscus that I just did recently. Ooh, and look, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. That is mold on top, but that's not gonna keep me from using it again. This is a Hopi exhaust. So this already was a second run with the Hopi. It's very, very light. So probably I will mix these two together and see if I get a color this time. Have some more birch. Oh, I don't know if that's birch. Let's see, don't remember. I made a lot of artwork using these kinds of things because the neutral palette is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, and then I have some more over here. I actually have some spruce cones as well as some pine cones. I have a little bit of a kind of lichen. This isn't the oak moss lichen, this is different. So I have that just here never used that one and then I have a piece of birch bark a beautiful piece of birch bark which even has a little lichen on it so if I find these downed in the ground I'll pick them up and bring them back and then I just store like a little happy storage of dye material oh there's some lichen that I've been collecting as well this is the oak moss great video I have on that makes a beautiful dye really, really efficient dye too. You don't need much to make quite a bit of dye. Then I have the remnants of a lot of the videos that I've made. So I have the acorn dye here. I have some more hibiscus. I have some matter exhaust. I have quite a bit of that. That'll probably just make a very light orange. I have a lot of that left over. That was from a, the matter that I made Back in January, I did a video on what I call the stars of natural dyeing matter being one of them, sort of traditional dyes. Oh, haha, -ha, there is some lichen in there. I can see it sitting. So this is a pneumonia dye bath. I'll probably just keep this and bring this with me because these can sit for a long, long time. I've got some logwood down there. I've got some scabiosa. I tried to dye with it recently and it didn't do much, but we'll try it out and see these were exhaust scabiosas from a video I did dyeing from a scabiosa kit from the color farm. Then I've got some, ooh, some cochineal. I'm excited about that. That definitely, I'm looking forward to dyeing with that again. And then over there is a whole series of both some iron I see, iron bath that I made from powder, as well as some oak gall. These are all upside down, I apologize for that. It's hard to get over here. Oak gall, you can save mordants. So this is a whole box of mordants and you can save and use these as your starters for a next round and always add to them. So, awesome. What else I got? What's under the cochineal? Something big. Surprise, logwood. Oh, logwood, beautiful. I'm very excited to use those too. So, I gotta clean all this off because guess what? I have a friend who's taking this table. I will have a porch in my next house, but it will be very small, it's a balcony, and I have to get rid of this table, which has been with me for, gosh, decades. So I'm gonna clean this off now so that they can come take the table and then we'll head inside and look to see what's in my two refrigerators. Certainly growing mold, but also we'll be sure to provide some color for us over the next week. all nice and cleaned off and ready for my friend to pick up. And while I was moving things, <laughs> I noticed here that I had a lot of dyes from like 
pine and spruce and these kinds of things. The labels have worn off because they've been outside for so long, but I know that these are from like a year and a half ago from like Idaho. And then I also found this whole bundle of stuff that I also brought back from California, including eucalyptus bark that I foraged that I don't think I've done anything with and some other treasures in there, all kinds of goodies and then some secret no names. So this is a real experimentation video and also hopefully to encourage you to just try all different kinds of things. Don't give up on something because it either A, doesn't turn out the way that you thought or B, you don't know what's gonna come from it. Just try it out. That's how we learn, right? Learn by doing. So, all right, let's move into the fridge. Fridges and freezers. Yikes! Let's go. So, this is my garage fridge, and this is my overflow fridge. And it's a great place for me to store my extra dyes and dye matter. And the problem <laughs> is that I do use it for other things, just sort of extra overflow storage, and I kind of forget that I have dyes out here, and occasionally my son will be like, hey, something stinks, or <laughs> There's not enough room in there and I need some more room. So I'm gonna quickly show you some of the stuff that's in there and then we'll go to that last place which is actually the overflow into my inside fridge. Oh. All right, turn you around. It's a little messy in there. So my top shelf all dyes. There is actually some dye matter. It is the remnants of a dye that I did for black walnut, what I call black walnut sludge. Could probably make more dye, and maybe I will or not, not sure. I also, this is not gin, you gotta be resourceful when it comes to storage. This is actually gallo tenon, so I can use that for mordant. What else have I got in here? I've got some pomegranate, Yikes, can't even really see it. It's kind of a funky thing, but definitely pomegranates in there. We have some black seed cold. This is some more Hopi. So again, I will combine those, Hopi cold. And then way in the back, I know I've got some other very old ones, which may or may not end up going into my dye pot. We'll see, what do we got here? More Hopi, got a lot of Hopi. And down here, I have some pomegranate plus logwood plus iron. So this was used to make natural black. There's a video on that. Have some more gallotannin. That's great. Dried Coreopsis, ooh, I use this. This is really great. I love Coreopsis. We have some more Coreopsis. Let's just say we got a lot of stuff in there. So I've got all of that to deal with and this fridge is going tomorrow so it's gotta be done. Then over on here, I have a whole bunch of the inks that I made. This was from Prague, which was made from different things I sourced in Prague. And then I have some very, very old inks that I made for the very first time and just when I was testing it out, this was like two years ago. So these have drops of oregano in them, which keeps them from molding. So I mean, I'm telling you, this is red cabbage ink. And red cabbage notoriously molds quite a bit of high sugar content in there. And look, there's no mold in that. And this is probably two and a half years old. So those will be coming with me. I also have my bougainvillea ink here from my trip down to Baja in February this year. I will show you one other treat in here that I will be bringing, and that is I have frozen black walnut. I had a friend down in California forage for these, because I don't have them, and these are all of what I haven't used yet. So at some point, I'm gonna have this beautiful opportunity to make more black walnut dye but in the meantime, <laughs> I have this. This is black walnut dye. 
I was commissioned to dye something quite large. She wanted it to be the beautiful color of black walnut. And I still have some leftover. And that's already been used once or twice for dye. So it's definitely an exhaust bath at this point. I may or may not get much color, but I'll probably at least get a light brown. All right, let's go into the house. Now, as you can tell by my get up here, I've been basically running around for the last week, desperately trying to go through years and years, not only worth of dye, but I am an artist and I have so many art supplies and they've kind of accumulated over the time and I never had a chance to go through all of them. So I went through and let me tell you something, <laughs> I'm giving away care packages to all different kinds of artists and teachers in schools with young children as well as some shelters. I'm just making little care packages of all kinds of <laughs> crayons and markers and pencils because I don't know how I accumulate so much. <sighs> I'm trying to purge. Anyway, last thing is this indoor fridge. I'll quickly show you. And then it's time for us to step through the process quickly of the things we have to do in order to prep for dyeing that always sounds so weird, as well as prep to make natural dye and have a successful dye. And we'll just quickly step through those and maybe like a little quiz for you. But let's look inside. Forgive the mess in the house. Okay. So I have a drawer here, all kinds of things up here, as well as some indigo. This is Japanese, actually from Japan but I have blue pea. That's fun for certain things, but it's not light fast. Don't know what that is. Again, no label, silly. What else have we got up here? Again, no label. The color's telling me it could be, oh, you know what? I think this is all blue pea. I love to use blue pea in my installation work. It's super pretty, and since it's ephemeral, it doesn't matter. I think that might be all blue pea. Then, oh my gosh, what a mess. I have got my onion skins. These will be coming with me. I save all my onion skins. And then I have things like, ooh, I have a big pot of avocado skin. And I've got some avocado pit. Avocado is such a great dye. Some more pit. And I've got something there. I don't know, under the eggs. This I did label. That is red onion. These have already been used once to make a dye. I kept the remnants of the skins themselves. They will probably make a lighter color, so I can do that. Probably not gonna have time to do anything where I create new dye, so these things will probably come with me. And then back there, interspersed between things like my lime juice and cocktail onions, as well as some Yes, soy milk for doing some binder. I've got some matter. Oh my gosh, matter. That's good. I'll definitely do some matter. And some other things back there. What are you? You have a little sticker on you. Hmm, oh, noble fur. Oh my gosh, that is old. When you add iron to it, it makes a very pretty gray green. Okay, I've got some other things just a very little bit red onion plus iron that will probably not be enough to make anything we're gonna be blending some stuff what are you that is oh ice plant oh my gosh <gasps> okay I'm gonna be doing a video about ice plant in a week so yay I have some here <laughs> ice plant so beautiful that color all right enough look at what this is these are my Easter eggs that I did this year Yay, so pretty. And this all has to get cleaned out by tomorrow. Ah! One more thing in the fridge, freezer, sorry. I have frozen pomegranate skins. Great as a dye and a mordant, tan and mordant. I have some frozen onion skins. And I have avocado skins and stones so you can freeze a lot of things like this and save it 
these have not been used. I actually made a bunch of avocado dye recently and I just used it from there. So, so that's the quick view of all the stuff that has to be gone within the next day. I now have pulled out my fiber inventory. And as you know, the first step with fiber is that you need to wash it or scour it. I have already done that. I did that a while ago. I often will do a whole bunch at one time where I'll wash it and then I'll even go through the process of doing some mordant. So I currently have some fiber that already has a soy milk binder on it as well as some alum and maybe some aluminum acetate, not sure about that. So wash slash scour, one of the two, mordant. And remember that we're going to be soaking our fiber always before we put it into a morning bath and then before we put it into the dye bath. So I need to get started and I'm just going to show you bits and pieces, but not a lot, all exhaust baths just to show you about how you can use natural dye material more than one time. You'll get different results, but it's a fantastic way to continue to accept more color from nature and it can be very surprising. So I will get going and see what I get. All of these things have been kept in a fridge, in a garage, or outside in relatively cold weather. Some things will have mold on them. I will scrape that mold off, not worried about that. Also, if I don't have enough volume, I will add water to it. I am not going to be working on any of the weight of fiber ratios in this instance. I don't have a lot of time. I just kind of throw things in and see what I get. And I'm going to not have any expectations. I'm just going to be moving through the process and seeing what turns out on the other side. And it'll be great fun to have a set of new fibers for my artwork and they'll be like the memory of the move and the ending of an era here and starting of a new era in my new place. So wish me luck. This is real. <laughs> so I just ripped up the fiber that had the soy milk binder that I already did, I don't know, months ago. And there's so much fiber. So I'm probably gonna use that first and go ahead and use that to dye with because I have so much. So all of this fiber, which I've ripped, up into smaller pieces. I have silk. I have some different kinds of cotton. Some of these are I really enjoy working with as for my own artwork. And I had some linen in here. I have some of that awesome. I really like this stuff too. It's like a velvet, silk velvet. It takes color really pretty. And I have some bamboo in here too. I haven't used bamboo for a while in Color Quest. So anyway, I'm gonna soak this to get it going. And then I'm just gonna start pouring in some dyes to get them heated up. And we'll start that process. Okay, I have now pulled everything out of the two fridges. I still have all that stuff outside, which I showed you. I'll go through that as well, but I'm putting them into groups and pretty easily coming up with which dyes I'm gonna be able to make based upon what I have and that I have enough of and that I feel like it hasn't been sitting around. Well, I mean, some of them's been pretty long. I have some stuff that's been in there for probably close to two years, but I've got some things like you know, red cabbage that I'm just gonna throw away. I have a little bit of some red onion skin, but it's not enough really to do anything. And I've got so much that I'm probably pieced together enough to make some pretty decent dye pots, but <laughs> it's a little embarrassing, maybe. I think I have a bit of a problem. Check it out. There you go. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, how horrible is this? A lot of this I'm gonna throw away just because it's really old or it's just not that much. You know, I have some black tea. I have a little bit. That's one's easy to make. I mean, I have some red cabbage. Actually, I take that back. See, double things. Is it red cabbage vinegar or is it pomegranate plus logwood plus iron? I'm thinking it's the latter. So I'm gonna keep this one. See if I can make some black out of that. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the blue pea. Blue pea is not a great dye for longevity. It's extremely sensitive to light. It'll fade way too quickly. But I have not enough of the red onion plus iron, just not worth it. So it's possible that based upon all of this, I will actually just work on making the dye with the already treated soy milk, which is still soaking here, the binder that I used here for the soy milk for this fiber. If I end up saving the things like the gallo tannin, that's okay. And I have all of those other mordants outside as well. So I may just put together and keep that because this is super useful actually to be able to have mordants already mixed up as the base to start new mordant projects. I think I will start with the avocado skin and stone. I have so much of it and I'll just make one giant pot. This is not that old. I only made this maybe three weeks ago. There's a little bit of mold, you can see. And as I've said a few times, all I'm gonna do is just skim the mold off. And I can do that with a spoon or I can do that with a strainer and I'm not worried at all about that. A little bit of mold, no biggie, just skim it off. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful that looks. I can't even believe it. This has just been sitting as an exhaust in my fridges. So this is avocado combination of skin and stone. I threw them together. This is Hopi sunflower, very subtle, but look at how it took to the silk. Wow, beautiful, a beautiful range of sort of lavenders and mm, I don't know what color that is, but it's beautiful. And then look at the vibrant matter combo exhaust and super exhaust. <laughs> so vibrant, really orange. Depending upon how you treat it, it can move from a deeper red to an orange. And then obviously these are peaches as an exhaust. Beautiful. Wow. Absolutely love that palette. Look at that. Gorgeous. So very quickly about exhausts, two ways to think about it, in my opinion. One is that you make a dye and then you keep that dye and you use that dye again. That's an exhaust. You could also say the same thing with dye matter. You could use a dye matter, save the dye matter, and then make a second pot. Now, Exhausts are also used in some instances with some dye matters to extract as much color with multiple dye sessions to extract all of the color from that dye matter. That's possible. And then you blend all of those dyes together and then dye your fiber. And that is also considered an exhaust process, if you will. So those are all different ways to think about exhaust or the way you might hear the term exhaust used. So it, I mean, look at those colors. <laughs> this is the second, maybe third time I've dyed with those. I was actually painful to actually put them down, down the drain right now, but I just can't move them. So, and I know I can make them again, but know that if you have enough space, 
you can get or multiple die sessions from the same die or die matter. And you just increase your range, your palette. It's such a cool thing. <laughs> and what an amazing way to repurpose, right? Love it. I ran out of time and so I'm going to bid you farewell here now. I am stoked with the gorgeous colors that I made from the exhaust baths. I didn't get to all of them but that's okay and it was fantastic to share those with you. They are a living memory really of the last year and a half plus here at color quest so i'm so grateful to have all of you here supporting me and loving the world of natural color so it's time to take down the line and very very happy about what I was able to do here at this house. And I'm excited for what I'm gonna be able to do at the new place. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Next week on Color Quest, I'm planning on taking you on a foraging trip in my new local area. We'll just pop around, and see what we might be able to find locally there. Same climate as here. It's not that far. It's only like 10 miles away. But, you know, it's a different area. And maybe there'll be something different in the forest near where I'm living. So, I hope you'll join me. And, yeah, don't forget to save those dyes and use them for exhaust. Because look at that color that I got. Anyway, thanks again for being here at Color Quest. Look forward to seeing you next week. <coughs> I also, wow, I look like a mess packing, so forgive me. <laughs> <laughs>